Hi, my name is Santa Duncanson. I'm a publisher at Jacaranda, and it's my pleasure to explain to you some of the ways that you can get the most out of your Learn On resources for your humanities classes. So today we're going to talk about five key things to really help you help your students get the most out of those resources. We're going to talk about using Learn On in humanities and some of the key features that you have. We can talk about engaging your students and the way that all of the tools and resources in the Learn On platform can get them into the content. We're going to talk about achieving differentiation and how you can manage that through different tools that we have. Building and tracking humanities skills, which is such a key part of so many things that you'll be doing in humanities this year. And of course, interpreting your students' results. Once you've set those tasks for them, how you can go about giving them the feedback they need to improve on their work. So the first thing we're going to look at is using Learn On in the humanities. What are all of the things that you have access to and some of the options that you have in terms of teaching your class? As you can see at the moment, we're here in ancient Egypt and our lovely new side-by-side -side screen view that shows you reading content on the left-hand side and the pre-test questions in this case on the right-hand side, but also I can click into exercises as well and have a look at those with my students. Now you might set those questions as a homework task, as a starter task before kids even start to come in. You might actually assign specific questions to specific students as well. One of the other ways that I think this is a really great tool to have in your humanities classroom is that not only can students look through the content and the questions side by side, you also have the option of projecting the information onto one screen, projecting it up in your classroom so that you can look through it as a class or in small groups as well. And as we scroll down, you'll see all of the videos are embedded at the point of learning. There are interactivities here as well that you can click through with your students and look through, in this case, the timeline of some of the most significant events in ancient Egypt. And use those as a launching off tool or as a, an engagement tool to help your students really get their head around the content that they need to learn. So the second thing we're going to talk about is engaging your students in their humanities content. Now, as you can see, we have the beautiful double page spread open here with your check your understanding exercises on the right hand side and the water in the world topic on the left hand side, one of my personal favourites from Year 7 Geography. As you can see, there are a number of different aspects of pages here to help keep your students engaged. As you scroll down the reading content, you can see all of the maps and all of the images are a really nice large full page view. So again, projecting them in the classroom gives them a really good opportunity to see what's going on and for you to have some really rich discussions about what you can see. You'll also see that here our key terms are highlighted and they're hyperlinked so that you can click on those and students immediately, if there are terms that they're unfamiliar with, they don't need to go somewhere else to find out the definition. It's right there on the screen, helping them to understand the content as they read through. As we scroll down, also you'll notice with our maps here, a lot of them are interactive. So it's getting students used to that idea of having layered maps where you can click on and off all of the different aspects here in your key. You'll also see right down the bottom of the page here that we have our on resources links. And what they do is tell you exactly what you have over here on the right hand side in your resources panel. So that gives you really easy access to all of the different aspects of that particular topic. So even if it's not in 11.2 Water in the World, you might think of another video lesson or an interactivity where you think, oh, let's just dip back into that and have a quick look to remind them of what it is they've studied previously so that you can keep on building that understanding really throughout the whole entire course. They're all there in the resources panel to your right for you to click on and access immediately. Now, the other thing that's really great in terms of engaging students in the content here, as you can see, with the left-hand side information that's sitting there in the beautiful pictures, you've also got on the right-hand side here a whole range of different question types. It's not just, here's a question, write the answer. It gives students the opportunity to drag and drop, drop different, um, different answers. They might get it right, they might get it wrong, and regardless, they're always provided with a solution at the point of learning. So they get that feedback always to be keeping them in the content and thinking about what do I know, what do I need to know, what do I need to improve further. So you can see that that's one of the drag and drop questions. There are some multiple choices. And again, it'll always give them the solution. Um, a few more drag and drops. We've got a couple of other ones where they need to type in the answers and get those specific things right as well. So the students are working through the questions all the time that relate to the content, staying on the page, staying engaged with the learning activities that you've set for them and giving them an opportunity to have all of, that, all of those resources at their fingertips. 
on the one screen at the one time. So it's a really great way of making sure that once they're in the content, that they save it. Because they don't need to go to other places on the internet or books or worksheets or anything like that. It's all there for them to learn on the page. So the third thing we're going to talk about this afternoon is achieving differentiation. And it's one of those key things in education at the moment that everyone needs to do, but is actually really difficult to implement in a classroom with so many different levels of achievement and ability. So some of the features that we've embedded into Learn On are really designed to help you do that. And one of the things I think is going to be really great is coming up in our Western Australian edition for our Humanities and Social Sciences for 2021. And this is in the Teach On tab. What you'll find when you click into the Teach On is differentiated learning intentions and success criteria and activity paths that will help you navigate all of the content that we've provided in Learn On for you at three different levels of complexity and achievement. So you'll see here that they're linked through to some of the different subtopics that relate, but it provides you with specific pathways that help you to organise the content and plan your curriculum based on what we have here for you and learn on. So it minimises the dipping in and out and it's a really smooth, streamlined differentiation. The other element that you'll see, and this is going to be available in Western Australia as well, are these lovely pathways here in your learn on questions. So as a teacher, what you can do is recommend to your students which of the specific levels worth of questions are most appropriate for them at this particular point in time. You can assign them all of the questions. You can assign them just the level one questions to get started, level three if they're really advanced and it just takes them to those questions that apply to their particular level. So that way they're not wasting time or getting bored doing questions that are not appropriate for them. And you can challenge them at their point that they need to be challenged rather than extending them too far. But it also means that your students can see all of the questions that have been and to come. So the next thing we're going to have a look at is building and tracking humanity skills because building students' skills appropriately and sequentially is such an important part of their humanities learning. So I'm going to tie this a little bit into differentiation as well because they are so absolutely interconnected. Now, we've also moved in place and time and here we are with the Roman army in ancient Rome. So I just wanted to show you quickly what you can do if you have some students in your class that you want to um, assign specific question types and specific skill types of questions to. So if we go in here to our assignments tab on the left hand side, we can create specific tailored assignments for groups of students or individual students within your class. So here we see all of the subtopics for ancient Rome. Now we've got to the end of this topic, so I'm going to click on ancient Rome here in the left hand menu and you can see that it automatically allocates or um, ticks all of the boxes here for all of the different subtopics and I want to see all of the questions for those. So as you can see, all of my questions relating to that topic have now opened up and I can see them all scrolling down here below that I've got 13 pages of 15 questions. Now, as I mentioned, I have those group of students in my class. I'm not sure how well they've really gathered a lot of the information or built their skills, particularly in a specific area. So what I can do is I can select specific types of questions from all of those question sets from my topic based on the marking type. So I can pick all of the automated questions so that the students are getting that immediate feedback when they're answering the questions at the time or the manually marked ones that I can go back in and mark myself later. But I can also pick questions based on the specific skills that I want to see how my students are going with. So in this case, I'm a little bit worried that they haven't necessarily got those ideas of sequencing chronology very well. So I'm going to pick the questions related to that and I'm going to pick the easy ones particularly because this is a group of students in my class that are not really very strong students. So I want to give them a balance of questions that are some that they can find success with and some that they might find a little bit more challenging but without being overwhelming. Now all I'm going to do is simply apply the filter and it'll pick those questions out of all of the questions in the topic for me. And here we go. You can see it's found 15 questions for me in that topic that assess my students' skills at that particular level. So now what I want to do is I'm just going to pick them all. I'm going to click them, then it will pick all of those questions for me. And I'm going to quick in, quickly go in to review them and select them for the specific students in my class that I'm concerned about. So I've picked questions from each of the topics. This I'm going to do as a practice. I'm not really interested in using this as an assessment tool for them. Happy to keep them in order. 
but I know that I've already set up specific groups in my class of students based on how well they are going. Now, my blue group are my group of students who I'm not sure that they're really keeping up with some of these concepts and skills. So they're the group that I really want to assign this specific test to. My purple group are going great guns. They're working on extension material, they'll be fine. And my kids who are not in any group yet are new into the class for this particular term. So I'm gonna give something else to them and assign that differently later. So as you can see, my blue group here, my four students, they will be assigned that particular task of those specific easy questions that test their ability to sequence events in chronological order and how well they can sort of um, work through some of those questions. I'm also going to give them the option of seeing everything once it's done, which is fine, and I'm going to make it available immediately. Because this is a practice, I'm going to give them a while to do it. So we'll set it for the 30th so that they can do it by like, 6 o'clock. Now what I'm going to do is assign that to them so that will pop up in their learner and they'll know that I've assigned a specific question set for them to actually complete in learn on themselves. So it's a really great way for you to be able to set specific differentiated tasks for specific groups of students or individual students within a specific class. And different groups can have different activities that they've been set and different exercises that they can work through so that you can tailor that content really specifically to their needs. So the last thing we're going to cover is interpreting student results because of course once you've built and tracked assignments for them and set them some tasks in Learn On, you'll want to know how they're going and how their skills are tracking. So what we're going to do now is have a look on how you can see your students' reports and the results of the tasks that you set them. So in the left hand menu here we're going to reports and results and we'll be offered a lot of opportunities to filter the results there as well to dig down really deeply into where specific students or groups of students are out in their learning. So as you can see here, as the window opens up, I've got a lot of options here in the top row for filtering all of the different results. I want to see at this particular point, just the student selected questions. So the students have gone in themselves and done those particular tasks. Now I have a concern here for Jon Snow. I'm not sure whether or not he's keeping up particularly with some of our skills. So I'm just going to at this point filter his results exclusively. Now I want to see not just all of the questions that he's been attempting, but I'd like to actually see how he's going in some of the specific skills. So in particular, I'm a bit worried about his ability to sequence things in chronological order. So I'm going to filter the skills and show all the results for all questions and show the report. Now what I will see then is Jon Snow's specific results and as you can see here for his history content that we've been working through on Ancient Rome, I can see that remembering and understanding he's achieved 69% for all of the questions that I've set him on. So I know he's tracking okay with some of those for few. And you can see that they're colour coded as well. So at a glance I can see the first couple, I don't need to worry about sequence chronology at all. I can see that he's got all of those questions right that I've set him. Where I do need to be concerned, however, is a little bit further down into my skills with determining historical significance. And some of those aspects of analysing cause and effect seem to be causing a little bit of difficulty for Jon Snow. So it's a really great way in the Learn On platform then that once you set those really carefully differentiated, targeted, tasks for your students, that you can come in here and dig deep into how they're actually going. Now, as we get further through the year, of course, this will also fill out with all of his geography, economics and business and civic and citizenship skills as well. Now, that gives me the opportunity to compare and contrast how he's going with similar skills across different subject levels. So remembering and, uh, remembering and understanding perhaps in history might be great, but perhaps when we get to geography and things might perhaps rely a little bit more on numeracy skills or different types of literacy, reading maps and things like that, I might see either a slip or an increase in some of those results. So I can get a bigger, broader picture of exactly how my students are tracking and where some of the shortfalls might be in terms of their understanding. And then use those really carefully differentiated skills tests to scaffold um, their learning and to help them build up those skills that they might not yet have been able to master. And that's getting the most out of your Humanities Learn On title. Hopefully you'll have learned something new from our five quick tricks and tips. 
that will help make using Learn On more engaging and rewarding for you and your students throughout the teaching year. So hopefully you've learned something new, but if there's any other questions that you still have or you'd like some more support from us at Jacaranda, we are always happy to help you out whenever we can. Just get in touch with your Jacaranda Education Consultant. They'll be able to answer your questions or put you in touch with someone in the publishing team who can work through a few more of the content related teaching issues with you that you might have. So best of luck for a fabulous teaching year and enjoy your learning journey with LearnOn.